today, I'm talking about my main project at the moment, which I'm working on for last year, uh, which is called Gentle Jousting. And it's a game about dicks fucking other dicks. And I kind of want to be talk about my experiences working on that and like the idea of making things that have lots of problems and like the line between being paralyzed by like anxiety of like whether what you're doing should exist or not. Um, and kind of how I've like negotiated that. Uh, so, uh, obligatory warning. Um, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I kind of like pitched this talk like a month ago, hoping I'd figure it out in that time. Like this is like stuff that's swirling around in my head for ages and I just couldn't pin it down. So I thought if I did a talk, I'd definitely figure it out, but I haven't really. Um, so I'm just sort of gonna give you like a stream of consciousness of like what I've been thinking. Um, and yeah, I also don't know if I'm the right person to be talking about this. Like, uh, I don't know if being like a cisgendered white male makes me the perfect person to talk about making problematic stuff or the worst. Um, but I'm gonna try to talk about it anyway. Uh, so yeah, this kind of all started for me, um, or like this sort of thinking really kicked off when I went to List, uh, which is a conference in Norway, a love, sex, and romance conference. And I've been like looking forward to going there for years um, and like loved all the work and projects that had come out of it. And then I applied to get in with like a history of like the work I'd been doing and got rejected and I wasn't sure why and then when I queried, I got accepted, but I never really knew why and then I went there and I felt kind of weird. Like I didn't know, I don't know, I was expecting to find like this like tribe of people and then I just didn't feel like I fit it in. I didn't feel like general jousting like fit it in. It was like taken very seriously by them. Um, so it kind of like gave me a lot of like pause and anxiety and I had to like stop and try and think about what I was doing and why it wasn't resonating with people and their concerns about it. Um, and I kind of feel like general jousting is like the ugly duckling of sex games at the moment, where it's like somewhere in between the mainstream and like the sort of high art, high art sex games, uh, which I love and adore and really want to be part of, but it's like too, it's just too messy. Um, it's got so many ideas going on in it. And um, yeah, I, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't fit, feel like I fit in the mainstream. It doesn't feel like fit in art, like sex game art scene. So I kind of want to, talk about like being in that weird space in between. So I think it has advantages. Um, so I, yeah, I guess like in relation, this is all, I guess talking about being problematic and I think I'll get a bit more into what I mean by that. Um, like I think all of these games are like very interesting and like pushing taboos in their own way. Um, for instance, like how do you do it is a game about like childhood sexuality. Like that's a really interesting thing, but something that a lot of people like push back on. Um, and like a game like Uta is a game about like a woman exploring her like sexual freedom sort of, I guess. Um, but it has like a lot of like non-conventional portrayals of that. Uh, so I guess I don't want to like be dismissive of these games as not being edgy because they are super, super edgy. Um, it's just that general jousting is maybe just less tasteful, I guess. Um, there was, what was I going to talk about on this slide? Hold on. Left this blank for a reason. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, basically, I guess this is the slide where I wanted to define what uh, I meant by like talking about prob being problematic, because um, it's obviously like, a very loaded word that has a lot of like meanings and is a bit like used with ad nauseum in society at the moment and is like often used like in a weaponized way I feel to like dismiss work and is just like used with a very broad brush. Um, but I guess like you, you can have things that are problematic like Bill Cosby or Woody Allen where the work is sort of not the problem as much as the person. Um, but in this case I want to be talking about where the values and ideas that the work uh, promotes are the problem or have issues. Uh, and like they're negative, they, they can, the values that are in the work can have negative ramifications in the real world if you're not careful. Um, so as an example, I want to talk about Harrison Ford's romantic encounters in his like main films, um, which is inspired by a video essay by Pop Culture Detective, which is really good, called The Predatory Romance of Harrison Ford Films, or something to that point. And it's sort of 
breaks down and looks at like the four of Harrison Ford's main films and sort of how how he engages with women in them and how that's kind of problematic. And it's, I think this is important because he's an idol, at least from my childhood and from many of our childhoods. We looked at him as like a, a bastion of masculinity and like a way to, to be in the world. But as you get a bit older, you realize, as you get a bit older and you look at like the kind of fucked up things you're doing and like the weird expectations you have in the world and you start to interrogate like where you think that might have come from, the more I've looked, the more I've traced it back to like the media and stuff that I watched and consumed and the values that I established from that. So I guess that's a lot where this talk is coming from, that I feel that there's a responsibility in the media uh, that you can, the media that's created to promote like healthiest values, although I guess I'll get more into what that means. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just gonna give you a quick example of these scenes so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so this is, if they sound. Can you boost this out a bit? So I do, I really do. You can be a little nicer, though. Come on, admit it. Sometimes you think I'm all right. Occasionally, maybe, when you aren't acting like a scoundrel. Scoundrel? Scoundrel? I like the sound of that. Stop that. Stop what? My hands are dirty. My hands are dirty, too. What are you afraid of? Afraid? You're trembling. I'm not trembling. Because I'm a scoundrel. There aren't no scoundrels in your life. I have a nice man in it. Nice man. Very nice. Sir, sir, I've isolated the reverse power flux coupling. There's an even more egregious example in Indiana Jones. What do you think is going on here? Since I met you, I've nearly been incinerated, drowned, shot at, and chopped into fish bait. We're caught in the middle of something sinister here. My guess is Dad found out more than he was looking for. And until I'm sure, I'm going to continue to do things the way I think they should be done. <laughs> How dare you kiss me? And here's where the narrative begins to reinforce more of those dangerous ideas about courtship. If that had been the end of it, it could have served as a lesson in what men should not do. Alas, Elsa is written to reaffirm the same dangerous myths that we've been talking about in all the scenes so far. I don't like fast women. And I hate arrogant women. Well, I hate them too. Well, I'm sorry. The idea that women secretly want men to force themselves on them. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, people would maybe object and say that it, those scenes were in context of, of the films and that the, the Harrison Ford character had knowledge based on the other previous scenes that like, the woman actually was interested in him. But I still think it creates problematic expectations in society where a lot of the things that you see with men that are harassing women constantly and not accepting no and stalking them on Instagram and stuff is because I think that they, put, they see themselves as that character that is is trying, is a devilish rogue being rejected, but will eventually get the person. So it's just sort of an example of how something that I saw when I was younger and sort of internalized is like, that's how you be a man, is not actually super great. And I had to unpack that as I got older. And I guess I just want to be more careful in my work that I don't accidentally reinforce these ideas. Um, you know, this is just the channel I highly recommend checking out. There's like really great video essays on toxic masculinity. Um, so. A clear example of this for me in games is um, the sort of uh, modern warfare uh, series. Well, well, specifically war games, and in the sense that when I was younger, I was not very politically aware or geographically aware, and my like entire worldview of what um, these like Middle Eastern countries was were, or were like was built from playing these video games. And when somebody asked me to picture Iraq, I would picture a level in um, modern warfare. And I think that that sort of, there's a line between where the responsibility lies there. I think as a consumer, you have a responsibility to educate yourself better and not just rely on like a video game as your one point of reference for geographical location and culture. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of responsibility in the creators to make something that like is a uh, like good, healthy representation of the culture. Um, okay, which I guess brings me around to general jousting and 
how we've tried to like make the game as le as like least terrible as possible, I guess. Um, so in case you don't know what it is, I'll just play the quick trailer. It's basically a party game for like four to eight players where you all play disembodied penises with assholes dressed in regular outfits and compete in a bunch of uh, multiplayer party games involving your main verbs of being penetrated and penetrating um, in as many ways as we could think of. Um, which is obviously a very like complicated space. There's a lot of like gender politics and like patriarchal problems. And it's also just really awkward to be a bunch of like white, mostly cis males making a game about like penises having sex with each other. It's just like, I don't know if you can get much more like patriarchal than that. Um, but it's something that has been important for us to explore, I think, and at least me. Um, uh, the game sort of came out of the desire to make, well, it came out of like my own sort of like latent homophobia in a way, like it was never strong, but I definitely felt a discomfort around like expressing interest in like, in like male sexuality and like other men, and I was like very shy about it. Um, and it was like very rife in my friend group, and I wanted to make something that I could sort of probe these topics. Also, when I say make something, like I didn't originally make this game, I just need to be clear about that. I jumped onto it later, but I've been experiencing like dick games for a while. Um, and I wanted to make something that you could play at a party with a bunch of strangers or friends and get into like really interesting conversations or just like show acceptance or comfortability with these things and like gauge how your friends feel about like rubbing their penises against yours, uh, even if it's like virtually. And also, it, it, what was surprising from it was that um, men were quite uncomfortable with it and most women were actually quite comfortable with it and like relished it. They enjoyed the opportunity to wield their own penis and um, like affect change on the world with it, I guess. Um, and there was also a lot of interesting power, like power play between like couples where suddenly the woman could penetrate the man and like how did the like, boyfriend feel about that? And there's like interesting conversations we had there. Uh, so on playtesting, we quickly realized that uh, the game, when left to its own devices or people's own devices, they immediately decided that the goal was to penetrate and not be penetrated. Uh, so to address that, we decided to put a point system in, which would give players points, one point for being penetrated and one point for penetrating, and I think two points if you get both. And it's never explained. So there's always this magical moment when people are playing, often a bunch of sort of like uh, more like typical dude bro kind of guys that will be like screaming desperately at each other to stay away from the assholes and hiding in the corner. And then there's like a light bulb moment where they suddenly realize that um, being penetrated is a good thing. And they will start like uh, desperately begging their friend to get inside them. And I don't know, I find that really charming and sweet. Um, and it's also hopefully, I'm hoping that the fact that it's not explained explicitly and they have to jump to it themselves, jump to the conclusion themselves, makes them realize their own like built in prejudices against that sort of thing. Um, but we were kind of worried about like the sort of power fantasy of the penises, like having sex with each other. We tried to make them floppy and silly and approachable, but we kind of also wanted to like, because penises are like such a weaponized object in society. Um, and I think a lot of people that had like bad, bad penis experiences in their life. Um, I, I, how am I trying to phrase this? Uh, well, we basically just wanted to put penises, show them in a more vulnerable, vulnerable way, and almost like I don't know, some sort of like sense of like pun punishing them for their deeds um, and mis, mis discretions. Like no one, no one really minds if a, a penis falls in a cactus patch. I feel like they feel differently if they saw a vagina fall in the cactus patch. Um, and then to follow on from that, we also decided to like explore uh, anal positivity, I guess, more in the game, and uh, also games that weren't penetration centered. Or this is a, this is a level where you both have to like you have to compete over getting a vibrator in your butt, and two people can get it in their butts, and they each get a point. And it sort of encourages you to think of putting things in your butt as like a rad thing to do, which it is if you want. Um, So, I don't know, the more we, the more we packed these ideas into the, into the game, they kind of like echoed off each other and 
the meaning of the game became less and less clear, and the reading of the game became less and less clear, and there was more and more ways to like read it in like problematic ways. Um, this was an attempt to try and like eroticize penises a bit more because they're not often like seen. It depends. Some people think of them as very sexy, but a lot of people have like get that thing away from me attitudes. And we kind of wanted to like show them in a more like arousing state, which is how, how I see them. Um, so this is sex, sort of lampooning the like sexy car wash with women, which is also just like an absurd thing to do, uh, like have a sexy bikini car wash. Just kind of like trying to flip that on its head and like have penises doing it, I guess. Um, we also wanted to like show penises not just. Oh no, the end of the presentation is now. Um, we wanted to show them in a more romantic setting as well, not just a sexual object, so we made a date night mode, which is just about going on a date with another penis um, and doing a bunch of like date activities, and there's no, I think there's, you get to have sex at the end, spoiler, but it's not really the goal of the game. Um, what am I doing for time? Anyone know? How much time? One minute. That's not a lot of time. Okay, then let me skip all of this other garbage. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, just getting to some of the problems of the game. Um, like, we ran into having... The way we portrayed consents in the game uh, is something we definitely had to do, but it's very difficult to, like, have a good... This is kind of, I guess, the core of the, ga the, core of the problem is when doing something right is not fun, and like trying to, to like manifest like continuous consent in the game, we couldn't think of a way of doing that that would like keep the game being fun, so we have the system where you, you consent by pushing up at the start of the game, but then once you're in, you're in, sort of, and there's, you sort of have to back out by playing, in like a social sense, by stop playing the game, putting it on the controller. Um, there's also, just give me a second, I need to my notes, that's my true thought. Um, oh, like also just the way penises like, penetration occurs, it's like very violent. Um, but on the other hand, I think it's very satisfying. So there's this sort of like game feel thing where like trade off, like I don't know, like it would be better maybe if it felt more softer and gentler, but kind of trading off for like a better game feel. Um, also worried that the fact that we're making a game all about male on male penetration and sex is kind of in a way, in a, a form of othering to homosexuality that it's like, um, because we need to make put this on a separate pedestal, it makes it like a different thing. Um, but it's more just trying to like normalize it for ourselves. Um, it's kind of a game made by like repressed heterosexual men for repressed heterosexual men to try and like work out their shit. Um, and yeah, there's, there's no portrayal of safe sex in the game. Um, we decided not to have condoms in it because we thought that would once again. Uh, make the game like less aesthetically appeal appealing um, and also just complicate things because then you have to have condoms all the time otherwise we basically just remove the concept of sexual disease from the game um, which there was like some pushback from on the forums where people didn't want to play it because it wasn't acknowledging uh, safe sex um, so I guess just to think more, more broadly about the idea of making things that are problematic um, I think this is obviously kind of a stupid idea but if you had a spectrum of like problems how problematic things could be, which you can't really quantize. But if you could, I'd say like, can't touch this. It's pretty far on the like right side of like, this is probably just a pretty great thing with like few problems. Then you have something like hatred, which I'm not actually sure if I'm like pointing out fairly because I actually don't know that much about it in its context. But it's definitely something that probably airs more on the side of like exploitation. Um, and then you have something like Call of Duty, which is like got all these like representation problems and like patriarchy problems. And then you have something like Warforce, which I think is a bit better than, Patri in, than Call of Duty, and it's like representation of war because it's more satirical and self-aware, but it still glamorizes and doesn't do it perfectly. Um, and then you get things like Candy Crush on like a different axis, which is like I doesn't I don't think it has many like content issues, but it's got like a lot of like ethical issues in the way that its systems work to like compel people to keep playing. And then I guess you have other things that fit in somewhere in between on that sort of spectrum. But I think what's like interesting, and this is like total pseudoscience, pull this out of nowhere rubbish. So, but like I do feel like there's this engagement curve where stuff that has m more conflict of like meaning tends to, well, stuff that has stuff that has less conflict of meaning t tends to like sell less. I feel or like be picked up and played less because it's sort of just not that interesting. I guess like I think things like can't touch this 
preach to a very specific audience, like very sophisticated audience, which is quite a lot smaller. Whereas with general jousting, we're trying to appeal to like a mass, a mass audience, um, which is, I don't really know where it fits in, but I kind of, way we sort of try to see it is like this Trojan horse that looks, looks really problematic on the outside and it's a little bit better on the inside, but hopefully like gets picked up by more people that need to have their like, uh, mas like the, the views of masculinity and stuff like picked apart and like questioned, whereas I think something that aesthetically looks like can't touch this won't be picked up by the, the audience that really needs to see it the most. I feel like it's mostly going to be picked up by people that just appreciate it for what it is. Um, so I can't remember where I was going with this slide. I think it was just probably talking that like, I guess like talking about that idea that general jousting has actually done very well. It's had about I think 300,000 sales now, um, which is I think quite a bit more than most sex games. So it's this weird thing where it's, it's definitely not the best sex game, but it definitely has a far reach. And I don't know if the fact that it's not the best sex game is what makes its reach further. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's just a weird trade-off. Um, so yeah, I just want to kind of, I'll wrap things up now. Uh, a little conclusion written down somewhere. Uh, so yeah, I basically feel like the world is like pretty complicated. Humans are kind of terrible at times. They're kind of great at times, but we try to like manipulate the world to our advantage a lot and like often very subconsciously. And because of this, there's a lot of like weird values in the media that we create. Um, and it's all, and because of this, we, well, this media we consume, we internalize the values in the media and it slowly becomes normalized to us that like war is okay because we play enough shooters and stuff. Uh, I know that's very generalized. Uh, but I think because there's this uh, value, oh, myself, sorry. <laughs> because there are these values in the, in the work, there's a responsibility on the creator to, to think about what you're doing, think about why you're putting it in. Um, and that can become very paralyzing. Um, I definitely sort of ended up very stuck for a while where I couldn't move left or right. I didn't know everything I thought of, like I'd go down the wormhole and eventually it ends and being like, this can be misconstrued or this can have negative effects. And for, like an example of this is something even as like benign as like snow cones, like trying to figure out how you pay for a date at the movies, like who pays and trying not to like uh, reinforce the sort of stereotypes of like the male or one person of the date like pays um, and negotiating that. And even here, I don't know if we got it perfect because uh, you're still the first person by default and the other person only pays if you choose not to sort of, um, but you can't kind of negotiate it. But I guess just coming down to like a fine grain of thinking about, about what you're trying to say with your work and what the things you're doing, uh, the Im implications of what you're doing. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can go pretty insane trying to figure figure this out. I think it's a lot like when you go down the rabbit hole of like veganism or uh, just ethical consumerism. Like at 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 some point, like our like society is built on like exploitation, and like you just have to draw a line where you stop stop worrying. But you have to you, you have to work really hard to figure out where that line is. Um, one sort of like interesting thing that I think I, I when I started making games, I kind of had the like view that there was no such thing as bad art and all, all art pu pushed like discourse forward. Um, but I've kind of changed my tone on that, I guess, as I've gotten older um, and like definitely seen that like your art, your art can change people and you have to be careful about it. Um, and I think in a way, so the, this game on the left is called Slave Trade and it's got this like really, it's a very controversial game and I think it was pulled from the Steam store and it's sort of a game that tried to like create a historical portrayal of the slave trade, and because especially with one scene that really like fired everyone up, which was this like scene of human Tetris trying to um, fill your slave boat with, with with slaves, like the maximum capacity using Tetris mechanics, and everyone was really disgusted by this. Um, and I think that in a way, it's it's less dangerous to make. It's less dangerous to make something that's really controversial like this, because the, then people have to talk about it. 
and think about it versus making something like Indiana Jones where, where the, like, the negative ramifications are so subtle, I don't know if anyone picks them up. And there's not a lot of discourse about it. Um, so, yeah, rambling conclusion is that um, Yeah, just trying to find that find that line of 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 how to make things that hold up your value system is really difficult, and I encourage you to not be afraid to fail, because um, you will. And just, I kind of subscribe to the thing of try it and put it out there and listen to what people say, um, and be like willing to fix it if you if you fuck it up, um, and be willing to like apologize which is sort of my, my approach, but I don't know if that's right. Uh, regarding this scene, we ended up pulling it because I, I wanted to see how people would react to a scene about a penis penetrating a dead, another dead penis. Because um, I thought it was really interesting because I feel like it was never going to be a mandatory thing in a game. It's like an Easter egg, and I kind of feel like that it puts the ethical responsibility in the player's hands, not, not the developer's hands. But most people I chatted to felt that it, as a developer, by putting it in there, you were saying that this is an okay thing to do. Um, so yeah, I think that's just interesting to be like, when people play your games, by putting choices that aren't okay in them and letting them choose whose responsibility are they. And yeah, sorry, that was so rambling. Um, I've been like very, I have like three games starting here and I'm just like haven't slept enough. Um, but yeah, I'd love to chat some more to anyone that wants to talk about it. As I said, I feel like this talk in a way is like a mirror of the game where I don't really know if I should be the one to talk about it, but I am because I want to. And I also don't know if that's okay just talking about things because you want to. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. Um, I would just like to give credits to the rest of the team because it kind of made it sound like maybe I was John Justin, but I'm not at all. Uh, the game was originally started by Evan Greenwood and Martin Cavalli, uh, Berlin 2017, no, 2015 actually, you know. And yeah, it was like, just a big team of people working on it. Uh, John Keevy, Robbie, Jason, Sutherland, Shaz, Dunfoyle, and Stuart Coots. And they're all around, so you should chat to them about it. Cool, thank you guys. <laughs>